In a video posted to social media, former President Donald Trump went over his plan to end the, quote, censorship cartel between big tech and the federal government. This comes amid reports confirming that members of the Biden administration were colluding with Twitter employees, censoring certain posts, and even blacklisting certain accounts because of their political views not apparently lining with left-wing ideologies. Watch. If we don't have free speech, then we just don't have a free country. It's as simple as that. If this most fundamental right is allowed to perish, then the rest of our rights and liberties will topple just like dominoes, one by one. They'll go down. That's why today I'm announcing my plan to shatter the left-wing censorship regime and to reclaim the right to free speech for all Americans. And reclaim is a very important word in this case because they've taken it away. In recent weeks, bombshell reports have confirmed that a sinister group of deep state bureaucrats, Silicon Valley tyrants, left-wing activists, and depraved corporate news media have been conspiring to manipulate and silence the American people. They have collaborated to suppress vital information on everything from elections to public health. The censorship cartel must be dismantled and destroyed, and it must happen immediately. And here is my plan. First, within hours of my inauguration, I will sign an executive order banning any federal department or agency from colluding with any organization, business, or person to censor, limit, categorize, or impede the lawful speech of American citizens. I will then ban federal money from being used to label domestic speech as mis- or disinformation. And I will begin the process of identifying and firing every federal bureaucrat who has engaged in domestic censorship, directly or indirectly, whether they are the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Health, Human Services, the FBI, the DOJ, no matter who they are. Second, I will order the Department of Justice to investigate all parties involved in the new online censorship regime, which is absolutely destructive and terrible, and to aggressively prosecute any and all crimes identified. These include possible violations of federal civil rights law, campaign finance laws, federal election law, securities law and antitrust laws, the Hatch Act, and a host of other potential criminal, civil, regulatory, and constitutional offenses. To assist in these efforts, I am urging House Republicans to immediately send preservation letters — and we have to do this right now — to the Biden administration, the Biden campaign, and every Silicon Valley tech giant ordering them not to destroy evidence of censorship. Third, upon my inauguration as President, I will ask Congress to send a bill to my desk revising Section 230 to get big online platforms out of censorship business. From now on, digital platforms should only qualify for immunity protection under Section 230 if they meet high standards of neutrality transparency, fairness, and non-discrimination. We should require these platforms to increase their efforts to take down unlawful content such as child exploitation and promoting terrorism while dramatically curtailing their power to arbitrarily restrict lawful speech. Fourth, we need to break up the entire toxic censorship industry that has arisen under the false guise of tackling so-called mis- and disinformation. The federal government should immediately stop funding all nonprofits and academic programs that support this authoritarian project. If any U.S. university is discovered to have engaged in censorship activities or election interferences in the past, such as flagging social media content for removal of blacklisting, those universities should lose federal research dollars and federal student loan support for a period of five years and maybe more. We should also enact new laws laying out clear criminal penalties for federal bureaucrats who partner with private entities to do an end run around the Constitution and deprive Americans of their First, Fourth, and Fifth Amendment rights. In other words, deprive them of their vote.
And once you lose those elections, and once you lose your borders like we have, you no longer have a country. Furthermore, to confront the problems of major platforms being infiltrated by legions of former deep staters and intelligence officials, there should be a seven-year calling-off period before any employee of the FBI, CIA, NSA, DNI, DHS, or DOD is allowed to take a job at a company possessing vast quantities of U.S. user data. Fifth, the time has finally come for Congress to pass a digital Bill of Rights. This should include a right to digital due process. In other words, government officials should need a court order to take down online content, not send information requests such as the FBI was sending to Twitter. Furthermore, when users of big online platforms have their content or accounts removed, throttled, shadow banned, or otherwise restricted, no matter what name they use, they should have the right to be informed that it's happening, the right to a specific explanation of the reason why, and the right to a timely appeal. In addition, all users over the age of 18 should have the right to opt out of content moderation and curation entirely and receive an unmanipulated stream of information if they so choose. The fight for free speech is a matter of victory or death for America and for the survival of Western civilization itself. When I am president, this whole rotten system of censorship and information control will be ripped out of the system at large. There won't be anything left. By restoring free speech, we'll begin to reclaim our democracy and save our nation. Thank you, and God bless America. Now, whether or not he becomes the next president or even ends up the next Republican nominee, we'll just have to wait and see. In two recent polls, we actually had Florida's current governor, Ron DeSantis, toppling Donald Trump. But of course, in polls other than that, Trump was defeating DeSantis. So, you know, we're not really sure which polls are correct. You know, we have Trump on Truth Social saying that the polls that show him losing are just these fake polls that the media are trying to put out there to make him look bad. But again, if you look at most other polls, we actually have Donald Trump winning by a pretty large margin. So if you go to Real Clear Politics and we look at the 2024 Republican primary, we can see that on average, these other polls, Trump is actually winning by right around 21 and a half points. So right now for the 2024 Republican nomination, you would have to think that Donald Trump would be the clear cut favorite. He was the former president. He still has a very large base. He still won quite a few votes in 2020 versus Joe Biden. And if not for Joe Biden, uh, you know, actually getting more votes than Barack Obama to everyone's surprise, Donald Trump would have been in the candidate in 2020. Of course, historically speaking, we haven't seen too many presidents lose an election and then go ahead and try to run again. So Donald Trump would be one of the few that would attempt to do this. Now, whether or not registered voters in the Republican Party would get out and once again vote for Donald Trump rather than maybe another candidate such as Ron DeSantis, Again, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, let me know in the comment section below who you would prefer to see get the Republican nomination. Would it be Donald Trump once again? Would it be someone new like Ron DeSantis? Would it be perhaps someone other than Ron DeSantis even? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video.